Hi, it's Tom taking a look at No Man's Sky's latest patch 1.20, the Pathfinder update. Landing on PS4, PS4 Pro and PC, this is the biggest update the game has seen so far. At last, bases can be shared online. There are three new vehicles, including buggies, a permadeath mode, new weapons, expanded trading options and classes, and a slew of other smaller upgrades. But the part I'm focusing on today is of course the graphical improvements. Developer Hello Games promises plenty here, with improved lighting effects, light shafts, added ambient occlusion, 4K support on PC, and notably 4K support on PS4 Pro as well. What you're seeing here is just that, the PS4 Pro version with the Pathfinder update's promise of 4K optimization. But to cut to the chase, this isn't a native 4K, even though the results are still impressive. What we have instead is 1800p, that's 3200 by 1800 on PS4 Pro, with a temporal anti-aliasing pass that mostly resolves the remaining jagged edges. There's no checkerboarding here, but 1800p brings a stark boost in image quality next to a regular PS4's 1080p. For perspective, that's a 2.8 times increase in pixel output over the standard machine, and for a game with such massive environments, it means we're able to pick out more detail at a greater range now. Now that situation changes for PS4 Pro owners running the game with 1080p selected on the console's menu. At 1080p expect the same image quality as a regular PS4, no super sampling from 1800p in this case. On first glance, it's a frustration we have no option to force the machine to super sample, but I will say this has huge benefits for the game's performance as I'll cover later on. Now as great as 4K looks, there are a few minor drawbacks to PS4 Pro's presentation. Firstly, the game's temporal AA doesn't cope well with the sharp, brightly lit edges you'll catch around space stations. There's a visible pixelation on these lines at slow turning speeds, even with that massive boost in resolution. The good news is, while exploring planets with heavy vegetation, it's not an issue at all, and with 4K selected, the image is smooth and clear. You won't catch these artifacts on the planets themselves, it's just a blemish with these interior areas, where the TAA can struggle. The other snag is that draw distances aren't much improved on PS4 Pro, and at 1800p, popping ends up being more obvious. Draw distance settings are on par with a standard PS4. You'll see trees and mountains fizzle into view at the same range as you boost quickly across the planet's surface. Back to the positives, and regardless of which machine you're using, high dynamic range is now in. Whether that's PS4, PS4 Pro or PC, No Man's Sky easily makes one of the best uses of it too, and those using 4K OLED screens especially are in for a real treat here. Of course, the game has an inherently high contrast art style. The deep blacks of space play against bright neon lines that make a great example of this technology. And not to mention the vivid colour palette on the planets themselves. HDR is a perfect fit for No Man's Sky's aesthetic, more so than the 4K support on PS4 Pro, to my eye this represents the patch's biggest visual upgrade, provided you have a compatible display. Looking at PS4 and PS4 Pro side by side, the situation is more straightforward here. Both consoles have very close settings, and the main improvement you get on PS4 Pro is really that resolution bump. From effects quality to texture quality and even texture filtering, these machines are turning in matching results. That being said, loading times take a satisfying step forward on PS4 Pro. Using stock drives on both machines, I loaded a previous save to a freshly discovered planet. It's a process that takes just 23 seconds on PS4 Pro compared to 34 seconds on a regular PS4. That's a third of the weight cut off. And while the game does transition seamlessly between planets, at least the initial loading time is cut down. It's also worth mentioning a new horizon-based ambient occlusion is added on both consoles and PC. It's the same quality effect on all three formats, filling out the corners of the world with shade. On the one hand, it does add depth to terrain, shading across the ground that creates a fuller looking landscape. But look too close and the illusion is shattered. Raising your ray gun against any surface, you're left facing a dithered messy patch of shade. It happens on both console and PC, and even objects around the space station use this effect to an excessive degree, creating banding artifacts. There must be a middle ground here. When it works, it looks great, but these worst case areas are a distraction. On PC, you'll also see a new light shaft effect. It's a brilliant addition that blends nicely with the environments. Notice how moving around our ship, we get light streaming through the air. It's a smooth and often beautiful looking extra that adds hugely to the atmosphere of each planet. 
on console though, these light shafts are absent. On PS4 Pro, for example, you only get bloom and lens flares affecting the corners of a spacecraft, a very slight bleed around the edges. The streams of light we get on PC don't appear at all. I've tried several planets, but so far the effect just hasn't shown up. It's a shame, and hopefully something to be added down the line in a later console update. No Man's Sky support of PS4 Pro is decent then. You get 1800p and better loading times, though the lack of these light shafts is a missed opportunity. However, it's in performance that No Man's Sky is taken to another level on console. As of the Pathfinder update, PS4 Pro now removes the 30fps cap of the standard PS4 and targets a full 60 frames per second. It's something I've wanted since the game's launch on console, and finally we have it with this update, but there's a catch. Okay, here's a three-way test. On the left is a regular PS4 with its 30fps cap. This holds up pretty well in performance. Even pushing it hard with fast flights over complex planets, it doesn't buckle as much as it did at launch from that 30fps line. In the middle is our PS4 Pro, set to 1080p from the console's main menu. As mentioned, this forces the game to render natively at 1080p on PS4 Pro, but takes advantage of the machine's extra CPU and GPU power by hitting 60fps almost without a fault. Any heavy effects work on the ground, and it stays convincingly locked to 60fps like this. It's a fantastic result, and feels leaps and bounds more responsive than the original machine. Last of all, on the right is PS4 Pro again, set to 4K in the console menus before booting the game. That forces a much crisper 1800p image, but as you can see, this is where the 60fps dream falls apart. Even while walking around basic areas, the console just can't hit that number while pushing a 28 times increase in pixels. Simply put, it would have been better to cap it at 30fps to keep motion even. Fill rate is clearly an issue with PS4 Pro in 4K mode. In fact, the game drops below 30fps, worse than a regular PS4 in the same conditions when faced with lots of particles, post effects and alpha. And it's only when staring right up at the sky that you'll actually hit 60fps. It's not an ideal scenario for those playing with 4K selected. Ideally, we'd have an option to cap it at 30fps, but even then, it's easy to trigger a drop to the low 20s. Given all it takes is a look down to the floor while mining for a resource, it's clear PS4 Pro can't handle running at this resolution. Again, this isn't a problem at all for the standard PS4, and at this same stress point, a PS4 Pro running at 1080p only drops briefly to 57fps. The silver lining is, for those hoping to play on regular full HD TVs, this patch is giving you an almost flawless 60fps experience. There are a few hiccups along the way for the 1080p crowd, the usual bottleneck while streaming terrain quickly while in the aircraft, but it's an exception to the rule. Overall, PS4 Pro owners get an interesting choice here. Either run the game at 1080p at a practically locked 60fps, or alternatively go for the 4K mode, delivering 1800p with performance ranging between 20 to 60fps. Either way, No Man's Sky's use of high dynamic range is the big surprise here, and well worth checking out if you can. Personally, I'm happy to play this at 1080p for the time being. It's a huge leap in smoothness over what we have on a regular PS4, and while it is a shame light shafts haven't made the jump from PC, the Pathfinder update is still a great addition on console. Anyway, that'll do for now. If you found this analysis useful, please do give us a like or subscribe to support what we do at Digital Foundry. But until next time, thanks for watching.